Today, we'd like to share with you a love story. It's late 2015, and Major David Lamanovich found himself stationed in Bagram, Afghanistan. And one day, he sees a poster on the wall that captures his attention. When you're deployed in the chow hall, in the gym, there's pictures of uh, folks coming on USO tours. And it said, you know, Jill Wagner, I think Romney Malko. So it was advertising that they were coming on base. And one minute later... Hold on. I dated a Jill when I was a hockey player in Greensboro, and I think this is the girl. They had gone on three dates 17 years earlier, when they were much, much younger. Both had been infatuated with each other. But as these things go, they were never serious. But now, Dave had a second chance. So, fast forward, next day, there's a little break in the action. So I quickly went up, said, hi, Jill. My name's Dave. You're from North Carolina, right? She goes, yes. I go, a little town outside of Greensboro? She goes, yes. I go, did you ever go to any Carolina Monarchs hockey games? She goes, yeah. I go, do you remember dating the goalie? So Jill looks at him, remembers their past, and then... I was kind of like, hmm, so this is where you've been, right? Turns out that their relationship hadn't ended in a, well, graceful manner... So this is why you couldn't call me and say, hey, I'm leaving. Maybe I'll never see you again, but it was nice to meet you like a gentleman would do. Dave apologized profusely. And later that day, they sat down and started to talk. Just getting caught back up, just kind of figuring out what he's been up to and obviously what I've been up to. A short conversation turned into a long one where they immediately felt at ease with each other, even more so than when they had first started dating all those years ago. It felt almost magical. And then he walked me back to where I was staying, and and it was like, well, good night. I remember I told him, I said, well, stay safe. And then we didn't see each other again until three years later. It just wasn't the right time. But don't worry, this romance has a happy ending. They bumped into each other three years later, randomly, in L.A. And three months after that, were engaged. It's the classic boy meets girl, boy ghosts girl, boy reunites with girl in Afghanistan, boy doesn't stay connected with girl, boy bumps into girl again, and, well, you get the picture. Jill Wagner was raised in a military family and has spent 15 years acting in a wide range of films and movies, ranging from Hallmark and Great American Family romances to reality television. Major Dave Lamanovich started out as a Canadian semi-pro hockey player and is now an Army Special Reserves officer serving in the Pentagon. In today's episode, we chat with Jill and Dave about their romance, why service is so fundamentally important to them, why they named their firstborn daughter Army, yes, you heard that right, and how they're giving back to their country through their co-creation of the upcoming television series, Lioness. I'm Carrie viro and this is Army Matters. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Army Matters. I'm your host, Sergeant Major of the Army, retired Dan Daly, and joining me today if he can get his mic to work, is my co-host and good friend, Leslie C. Smith. Hey, Dan. How are you today, brother? How's everything? I'm doing good. I set you up for that incredible introduction. And I know. Kind of- and, and, you know, I've had a, I had a hard time today. I don't know if it was because we were at Global Force last week. My communication stuff was not working right. You know, my mic wasn't working. Yeah. Did you set me up today? I, I swear I didn't touch it. I think I you did. I, I, think, may have- I think that you're trying to make me look bad, man. I may have paid somebody to do it, but I didn't. Okay, do it. you may pay somebody. That's right. Well, you we know what? We some, should some great people here today. We I mean, how, do have some great. We have wow. Literally, uh, I think the first time ever, movie stars. Movie stars. I'm talking like yes, yes. yes. So Dan, come on now, you're really a movie star. For our listeners and guests today, we discovered a few episodes before about Dreamboat Daily. 
If you haven't heard that one, you must go back and listen to it. Oh, gosh. Don't bring that back. I can still see him blushing today. New rule on the show. No no reference to previous podcasts. No. Nope. Well, we can't no reference nope. previous podcasts? New rule. Okay. All right. Well, hey, how about we start talking to our guests? Because I know our listeners don't want to hear us talk. They don't want to hear us anymore? No, okay. they don't want to hear us. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored today to have Jill Wagner, who's been in the public eye for over 15 years, hosting the television series Wipeout. And countless movies. My wife is a super fan. Um, and her husband, Dave Lamanovich, was a minor league hockey player who, after retiring, signed up for the National Guard and has served in Afghanistan and still serving our nation today. Jill, Dave, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks for having us. Hi. Thank you for having us and hosting us. We appreciate it. Well, they're actually on vacation in Florida right now, and they've taken the distinct opportunity to give us a couple moments of their day. What's the weather like down there, guys? Perfection, 75 and sunny. Wow. Wow. I don't know, Dan. Would you jump on and do a podcast with somebody if the <laughs> well, weather was 75 and sunny? I'm thinking we should probably go back and renegotiate our contract with yeah, our I producers. Yeah, I think so, too. They should have had to ship this down there to do this podcast. I think that's a great idea. Come on. Yeah. You could. But our producer's <laughs> saying no. Sorry. That, absolutely. <laughs> so, Jill, if we could start with you, please. Now, sure. um, you have a history of military in your family. Can you talk about that for us? Yeah, I do. I I came from a long line of um, men in the military. My grandfather, my uncle, my father, um, all Marines. So sorry, baby. But uh, <laughs> to, to my husband here is uh, Army. <laughs> well, we're all in the Army, so you're saying uh, sorry, yeah. baby, to three of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah, we, um, we won't hold that against it. We, we like Marines, yeah. too. We do. But, yeah, so... Um, was raised by Marine, and my father's very proud of that. Excellent. Your grandfather fought in World War II, didn't he? And I understand he was the strong, silent type, like many were in that generation. But one day you found some of his letters, which finally showed a glimmer of insight into his life during the war. Can you tell us a bit about those letters? Yeah, I was going through my grandmother's basement and trying to help her organize, and I came across this box of all these old letters and one in particular, I just remember it was so lovely. I mean, he was he was on a boat. I don't recall exactly where he was. He was on a ship somewhere. And he was just talking about how they were playing this song over the speaker. And he was out there writing this letter. And he was thinking about all of his buddies and, and this time in war. And just, I don't know, he just set this the scene uh, so beautifully. But it was also... Uh, obviously kind of sad, but, um, yeah, just going through those letters and hearing about his time and how much, especially that he missed my grandmother. Uh, they were married for, I think almost 60 years. So, uh, they had a beautiful romance and it was all romantic and, and sad at the same time. <laughs> I remember growing up and my mother had every copy of every letter that she wrote back and forth to my father while he was in the military. And many of our listeners today, the younger ones, of course, couldn't even fathom having to write a letter and wait months for a return, yeah. right? So it was really special when you got one. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a, I mean, it was a big deal when I first joined the army to get a letter, and I could imagine the impact those had on your life. I was looking at. We were going through our some of our stuff, and I think I still have all of those from Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and other deployments before we could do what we do today. But Dan, what do you think? This could be a potential movie. This could be a movie. We could break all those letters out and maybe you and I can get a little revenue off no, this. No, no, I'm talking about Jill's, right Jill's folks, not us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be a great story. Letters from the front or something Way like that. Way to keep it in-house, Dan. Yeah. Letters from the front, yeah. Yeah. Now, Dave, let's go over to you. Your family's from Poland, and we know the people in Poland have suffered through a lot of turmoil throughout its history. Did your family history push you towards a life of service, or was it something else? Yeah, for sure. My mother and father, well, everybody before them as well, were born in Poland. They came over actually to Canada in 1973. They both escaped communism. And prior to that, I had two grandparents. One was in a labor camp and one was in a concentration camp. Throughout my family, there's been survival through Nazism and communism. And uh, it, while I was in Canada, the reason I ended up in the United States is I was a hockey player. And so that took me to the minor pro leagues in the United States. And I came at a crossroads when I was 31, 32 years old down in South Texas. And it was time for me to stop playing and, and find another occupation. It was actually 
through happenstance, um, I met a lieutenant colonel at a uh, at a career day where I was there in the capacity representing my hockey team. I was a goaltender, so I had sort of flashy gear, and the kids found it interesting. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, through the PA, it was announced that Coach Gonzalez, the high school football coach there, mm-hmm. challenges uh, Killer Bees goalie Dave Lamanovich to a push-up contest. And I was like, dressed really nicely, dressed for slacks. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I was a pro hockey player. I was strong. But I mean, I didn't do bench or push-ups. Like, yeah. I get to... Uh, what's called the ROTC booth. And I say it that way because at the time I had no idea what ROTC was. He hands me a rucksack. It was, you know, 40 to 50 pounds. You know, the old school one, right? The, the yeah. green one from Vietnam. Right. And I said, what's this for? And he goes, well, you got to do the push-ups with the rucksack. And rucksack said, on your back. In my head, I thought, are you insane? <laughs> like, I have no idea if I could do three or if I could do 25. I, anyways. So long story short, I end up doing 42. I beat Coach Gonzalez. He did 27. And Lieutenant <laughs> Colonel Dean, the professor of military science at the University of Texas, Pan American, slaps me on the shoulder and he goes, that's Ranger material, son. And I said, like, New York Rangers? Like, I had no <laughs> idea. What the Army Rangers were. <laughs> True story. I had no idea what the Army Rangers were. You thought you're going to pro leagues right there. I on said, the spot. maybe this yeah. guy's a scout, too, like in his <laughs> off time, <laughs> you, you know, in October 2008, after I completed basic training within five months from my enlistment date, I became a citizen of the United States. And um, I realized at that point how lucky I was not only to be serving, but to be living in the greatest country in the world. Canada was a great place to live. But when I came to the United States and I, and I got to know the Constitution, I got to truly understand what freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness actually meant. Yeah. I just felt so proud to serve. And I realized this, that the isms in, of the past, the Nazism, the socialism, the communism, how damaging they were to the world and, and to every society. It, it meant so much more in terms of my family's history and what they fought through. And it made my service seem so small. And to this day, I still think it's very small, but I still feel like if I have the opportunity to do my part, I'm going to continue to do my part. That has to be one of the most unique I fell into the army stories I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, push-ups, right? Yeah, push-ups. Yeah. There's always a way someone gets in the military, and that one is extremely unique. What I want to do for our listeners is how do we get a, a hockey player gone army and a actress together in life? How does that – why don't you dig into that? So we met when I was 17, and I – snuck out of my house. Really? (laughs) My dad hates this story, but I did. I climbed out of my window and I went to go play pool at this little local pool hall. And um, David and one of his hockey buddies just happened to be there because I think you guys were playing a game in Greensboro, right? Right. But we we ran into each other there and met. and, um, And then we wound up dating. I think we went out three times. And then he never called me again and left the country and didn't say goodbye. This is great. You can't make this stuff up. And I'll never forget it. Jill leaves this part out. But one of the times I came over to to her house to pick her up, her dad, as cliche as it may sound, and I don't think he did it to intimidate me, he invited me in to his den and he showed me his gun collection. Now, <laughs> oh, that was that was definitely yeah. intimidation. That's not yeah. cliche. But yeah. if you knew yeah. my dad, it it's kind of <laughs> like he just wanted a buddy to like show his guns to. Like he's just that kind of guy. He's like, hey, look at my new toys. Yeah. You know, right. Well, the jury's um, still out. Let's just with, put it with, that with that a yeah. subtle threat. That's with a that subtle too. threat, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. And and you have to understand also in Canada, I had never seen a real gun. Right. Because they're I think I don't even think sidearms are legal. I think you can have a rifle or a shotgun for hunting or whatever the case may be. Right. They're just not seen except on TV. So I'd actually never even held one or seen one in in real life. Okay, It was a real kind of like moment for me. Like, oh, I'm in the United States now. And by the (laughs) way, there's another little moment from from the first time he picked me up, because for some reason, I I told him that my favorite cereal was Lucky Charms. Okay. during our conversation at the pool hall. And so he shows up with a box of Lucky Charms. Look I opened you, the door. You, I was like, wow. what? what? He listened. <laughs> He's a man. So he was, great. he was interested back then. He was interested he way was. back then. It all it took 17 years to bring it, it all together. <laughs> this is great. So finish the story. Go ahead. So 
I go to the unclass machine. I figure out I may know this girl. I tell my boss, I'm like, hey, I think I know her. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sh- sure, man. You know, I'm so sick of your hockey stories. <laughs> and I said, no, I think I've, I know this girl. I said, look, I have nothing to prove to anybody, including you. Tomorrow when she's uh, on base, I'll ask her. Mm-hmm. So fast forward next day. Um, there's a little break in the action. There's a bunch of, uh, you know, airmen and soldiers, Marines around Romney Malco getting their picture taken. And Jill's uh, desk or table, I should say, where she's signing autographs was the second one. So I quickly went up, said, hi, Jill. Mm-hmm. My name's Dave. You're from North Carolina, right? She goes, yes. I go a little town outside of Greensboro. She goes, yes. I go, did you ever go to any Carolina Monarchs hockey games? She goes, yeah. I go, do you remember dating the goalie? Because I was a goalie. She looked at me and... Jill, you can take over from there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't the happiest moment of my life. I was kind of like, hmm, hmm, so this is where you've been, right? So you, this is why you couldn't call me and say, hey, I'm leaving. Maybe I'll never see you again, but it was nice to meet you. Any kind of like a gentleman would do. Ouch. But I had I had some words and then I got over it. And then we, you know, we talked that evening. Like um, he, you know, just getting caught back up because he had a daughter at that time, just kind of figuring out what he's been up to and obviously uh, what I've been up to. And cause I was living in Los Angeles um, all the way from North Carolina and uh, we just got properly caught back up. And then really he walked me back to where I was staying and, and it was like, well, good night. I remember I told him, I said, well, stay safe. That was like the last thing I said to him. And then we didn't see each other again um, and so, because I was seeing somebody and he was seeing somebody. Okay. So we've all heard the incredible story about you guys reuniting in Afghanistan, but that's not what finally brought you together. Is it? I mean, how long after that time in Afghanistan, did you guys start dating again? So we, we didn't see each other again until three years later. Wow. Wow. Where he walked into a restaurant in Los Angeles, uh, that I was walking out of. So Literally, it was like the two ships crossing in the night. Is this chance meeting? This is chance. No, this is not chance. This is not. No, this is not chance. I don't believe in coincidences. You didn't get it right the first two times. (laughs) So this is the third time. So who was it? Was it David's fault or was it your fault, Jill? I mean, which one was it? You didn't get it right the first two times. Well, I think the first time we we wouldn't have lasted. We were both right. hotheads. We were both right. kind of, I, you know, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Although I was very much, you know, for a 17-year-old girl, very much in love with him. I just thought, oh, my gosh, this is my perfect guy. I'm going to marry this guy, which I did. I just didn't do it. Right then. When I thought I was going to do it. And I, and I think we needed that moment. Okay. But I think the third time was perfect. I mean, it was perfect because he asked me, I think, three months after we met in Los Angeles, I think. To propose, yeah. Yeah, you You propose it three months after you met again. Yeah, I think we were done with wasting time. (laughs) Really? I think at that point, God God spoke to us through a clairvoyant rabbi. Right. And (laughs) it's true. (laughs) It's actually true. A clairvoyant rabbi, okay. This is true story. Okay. And that was unbeknownst to me when we had met at that restaurant in uh, in Los Angeles. But within five minutes, I said to her that we're doing this. This is not... You know, you give me another chance, like, this is it for me. And uh, I hope you're on board. And well, here yeah, we go. Yeah, so this is your hallmark moment. So I can't believe it. Three times. It took the third time. Took the third time. Okay. And three months after that is when you proposed. Yeah, with a box of Lucky Charms. With the bo- Oh, that's and so And a lighthouse. Special. It was at the top of a lighthouse, box uh, of Lucky Charms. It was written on the... Uh, yeah. You know what? I you, mean... We can't, we can't publish this, Dan. <laughs> you know why? Because it's... You know the the, the mark is going to be set for the for these guys. Like, well, where's my lucky charms? <laughs> yeah, lighthouse. You know, three times the charm. Lighthouse. Wow. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. So, can we talk about your firstborn daughter now? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So, her name is Army. Yeah. Okay. So, explain the rationale behind that. You go ahead, David. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned. My family's from Poland. Mm -hmm. I love my mom. Um, But at times she can communicate with her thick accent in a way that um, can be uh, misconstrued. Let's just put it that way. So Jill's in Vancouver shooting a movie. I'm not there. Uh, She goes to see my mom. They have a great relationship. And we picked out the name Carolina. Jill is from North Carolina, has, you know, significant meaning to her. Uh, The name Carolina in Polish is Karolina with a K. 
easy for my Polish relatives to pronounce, easy for them to understand. Win, win, right? For everybody, all parties involved, all stakeholders. My mom proceeds to ask, hey, have you picked a name? Jill's like, yeah, we have actually, Carolina. David's really pleased with it because he said in Polish, it's Carolina, it's a common name, which it is. And she goes, Carolina? Like, that's not a Polish name. And I was like, Ugh. she's like, oh, this is ugly. I don't like it. It's ugly. I was like, um, okay, uh, back up. I'm like, well, I'm from Carolina. You know, we get, we're very proud from North Carolina. We're very proud and I'm Southern. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, okay, well that, that name's out the window, I guess. And, um, so Jill wakes up one day in bed and she's been thinking about different names and she goes, what do you think about the name army? And I'm like, okay, so I'm not, you know, super soldier. Okay. I am a guardsman. I'm a reservist. I'm not some high speed SF, you know, Ranger Delta guy right? who has probably earned the right to maybe name their child army or somebody else who's served for, you know, a lifetime dedicating their lives to the army. I said, you have to understand what the perception is going to be that here's this guy, this reservist guy who thinks like, Hey, he's naming his kid army. <laughs> kind of high speed is that, you know, like they're, in other words, they're going to have their opinion about it. I said, look, I'm secure in who I am. I'm secure in our marriage and our child in my life. I don't care, but I want you to be cognizant that that's what's going to happen. Okay. I said, if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. She goes, okay, what about army gray? And then we'll call her gray. And I said, that works for me. People that who met her in the first six months when we were calling her gray still ask and say, Hey, how's baby gray? Well, long story short, now we clearly call her army, has a head that was in the 99th percentile. <laughs> She's like this little like svelte body with a giant She's anvil like a on bobble her head. head doll. She's like yeah. a bobble head. <laughs> okay. And um, she doesn't have a lot of grace or finesse, and I'm sure that will come one day. She just kind of goes through things. Okay. <laughs> she just sort of asks questions later. Like the army does. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. You took the words right yeah. out of my mouth. So her, her, uh, her personality is army all the way. Okay. Keeps rolling along. That's right. Yeah. And we're also, and the other side of that story is we're super patriotic family. So I don't necessarily think it always just has to be like, oh, army. So it's all about David being the army. It's to me, an army of anything is very strong. And I wanted both of my daughters to just have that within them because I do. And I have that from my father who just raised me to be a strong woman so yes, Army will probably hate both of us one day for naming her Army, but I think um, I think it's a really cool, especially female name. One comment, one question for me. So I, I was the Sergeant Major of the Army. I'm the Ranger guy. You know, I'm, I fell into that category you talked about my entire life. I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. Yeah. I think it's totally cool. I would do the same thing, honestly. My wife probably wouldn't allow it. I, but I got to <laughs> go back to you, Jill. What did your mother-in-law say about the name Army? She didn't say one word because she was afraid I would change it again to like uh, lettuce. <laughs> I was like, you keep, you keep going at me. You keep me. messing with me, right? Yeah. You keep messing with me, but you know what? She's lovely. So I don't want to paint his, his mother in any other way that she's absolutely lovely. But I think the name that was supposed to come her to her came to yes. her in whatever, yeah. whatever means. And, and she definitely fits her name. Okay. And your other daughter's name is? Daisy. <laughs> Daisy. Okay. <laughs> My favorite wildflower. Okay. Let's take a quick break here before we go into some of Dave's experiences overseas and the exciting new television series these two have created. Did you know as a member of AUSA, you have access to many benefits from car rental to entertainment discounts. The opportunities are ample. Visit AUSA.org slash benefits to learn more. We're back. And before we dive into more conversation that will probably turn into movies someday, David, I think you need to say a quick disclaimer for our listeners. So because I'm on, I'm working for USASOC right now, I work in the G3 SOD at the Pentagon. I'm fully transparent with my chain of command about, you know, things that I do in my personal life. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, my views today um, represent me in my personal capacity and they don't reflect the views or opinions of USASOC or the United States Army. Excellent. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about Afghanistan. What would you say was your most challenging moment while you were there? Well, I think when we lost that KC-135. Mm -hmm. So in 2013, you may recall, we lost three aircraft 
sort of back to back to back. Yeah. We lost an F-16. Then we lost a uh, Boeing. And then we lost a KC-135 over the border of uh, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan as it was on an air refueling mission on its way into Afghanistan. And I was, as a special agent, I was the one who got the tap on the shoulder and said, you got to respond to this uh, crash site in the mountains of Kyrgyzstan near the Kazakh border. And we lost two pilots and uh, the boom operator. So we lost three airmen. And um, it was a chaotic site, not just the loss of those lives, but obviously there was the recovery of sensitive material and different things. And uh, I'll never forget when the PJs came in, I greeted them. Yeah. They flew in uh, from Bagram. And um, I'll never forget the PJ introduced myself, said, Hey, I'm Special Agent Lamanovich. He goes, Here, carry these. And it was three American flags. Yeah. And we got back on. I sat on the back of the ATV covered in mud, but I put those flags underneath my jacket so they wouldn't get dirty. And uh, we went to the crash site and they started to do their work of recovery. And um, I was the one holding those American flags before the PJs put them on, on the bodies of those airmen that we lost. Can you tell our audience, what does PGA stay, stand for? What do they do? Sure. So in the Air Force, they're pararescuemen. Right. So they're part of Air Force Special Operations. Um, and they specialize in well, many different things, not just, you know, sort of tactical raid stuff. But their primary purpose is is recovery of, of personnel and, and equipment and response. Troops in combat or, or troops in contact, they'll respond to that as well if, there, if there's a need. But uh, they're a, criti- a critical part of AFSOC. I, I don't think a lot of people know what PJs do yeah. for the Air Force. We know about what Army Rangers do and Special Forces and Delta. I mean, there's movies and Navy SEALs, but uh, I think the PJs and, and uh, folks in AFSOC are a little bit underrated. Yeah. Be nice to actually see a movie made about those guys sometimes because they're they're uh, they're top notch as well. But it is tragic that we lose so many good members of our military. And thanks for sharing that with us, David. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was really sad. I mean, there was uh, yeah. you know it was a catastrophic failure. We didn't know what happened at the time because the plane just exploded at twenty two thousand feet. Like, it was it a terrorist attack or you know it could have been anything? As an investigator, you learn not to rule anything out. So, Dave, you know, while you were in Afghanistan, I think you met some some interesting female operatives, and learned about the Linus program, right? Can you tell us more about how that led to the series that you and Jill are developing? Yeah, sure. So the genesis story of Lioness was Jill asking me about some of my experiences uh, in the Army and serving as an Air Force OSI agent, Office of Special Investigations. My immediate response was, there's really nothing remarkable about anything that I've done. But she kept pulling on that thread. And what she was able to extrapolate from from what I shared with her was that I worked with some incredible women. Uh, I worked with an incredible CIA agent that would come back from source meets and be like, you know, I can write three reports off this. Whereas in my mind, I got back and I'm like, those guys just wanted a free meal. So she was amazing. I I described her work with me to her. And then there was another MI officer that I went through Fort Pachuca with that was just like a superstar soldier. Off the charts in her PT test. Great briefer, really like socially engaging. Um, And so I shared that with her. And lo and behold, long story short, Jill's like, we need to take these stories of these women in the military. Uh, We need to put pen to paper. Then I started also talking about the lionesses of the early days of the Iraq war from the Marine Corps. There were actual lioness teams. And that's where the name comes from. There's so many ways you could take this thing. Uh, Not that I can give you any other ideas because there's a lot of people that you can cover that you can turn into the lioness process. I mean, we're just finishing uh, Women's History Month. Uh, it's, it's just so many different topics of things that I think you can do. Taylor Sheridan, for those of you who don't know who he is, he uh, is the showrunner, writer, creator of Yellowstone and many, many other amazing shows. And we were lucky enough. I I knew him because he was my old acting coach when I was uh, in my early 20s. And so I had kept up with him. And when David and I kind of came up with this premise in in our backyard on our farm with a bonfire. (laughs) So Jill, is this new series Lioness a conscious decision to take your career in a new direction? You know, to dive into more stories with military themes. Yeah, it was, it came from a conversation really about me at a, at a point in my career you know, I'm in my 40s and and it for women in in my line of work, it's a little difficult because we're judged n- not solely on our looks, but 
a lot. I'd say 95% on our looks. And, and so, you know, for me, it's always been like, well, look, I, I might be coming to the end of my career and what is it that I really, really want to do that I haven't done? I said, well, I want to play someone in the military. I think ultimately I wanted to make my father proud. I wanted to do a project in which he would say, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And also on the on the flip side of that, I've always wanted to do something to give back to the military in a small little way. And I think because of my line of work, this was a perfect opportunity to give back in, in some way. Can you give us a sneak preview on when it's coming out? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we just wrapped uh, shooting season one. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a uh, premiere sometime in the summer or early fall. It's a bit of a moving target, so I, I wish I could nail it down a little bit better for you, but I can't. On Paramount Plus. On Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Okay. That was a it free was plug there. It was free plug. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to have to buy a, another subscription for my wife, another yeah. subscription on. <laughs> she already has it, Dan. You just don't know it yet. She probably does. She Actually, I, Dan, I think this is going to be for you. This, oh, this one's gonna, for me? You're going to want this subscription. It's yes. a really, really good show. By the way, just to let you guys know, we've got Nicole Kidman. We've got Morgan Freeman. Oh, my we've goodness. We've got Zoe Saldana. Like, these are heavy, heavy hitters. It's a real deal. Yeah. All the beautiful people. Yeah. All the beautiful <laughs> and you're, people. And you're playing Bobby, right? I play Bobby, which is, like I say, a total departure from what people are used to to seeing me as. So they're either going to love me or hate me. I don't know. That's Bobby's haircut, by the way. Yeah, no, Bobby. that's Bobby's haircut. Oh. Yeah, it looks like G.I. Joe. I cut okay. all of my hair off. That's, that's great. <laughs> so, Dana, you know, I think we're about done. What do you say, sir? I mean, I, I have about a thousand more questions, yeah. and I want to dig and pry in all these little intricacies of this story. Um, but I, I think we have the makings of a Hallmark uh, series. I think so. A Hallmark podcast. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. But we can have them back, right? And like phase two, once once Linus we comes could. out, we could talk about how great he's doing oh, and yeah, everything else. We could. We could. Well, here's what I want to do. I know we get ready to close. I want to, can we do like a special screening maybe here at Association mm -hmm. United States Army and, and bring people in? In June, July time frame? What do you think? Who should we talk to? I think I know someone. You know somebody? I, I might I might know a couple people. You got some connections? Yeah, I might have a connection or Is two. Is his name David? <laughs> yeah. He's okay. a big co-producer, so. All right. <laughs> oh, special. Excellent. Jill and David, thanks so much for joining us. We've, we've done a lot of these. This is probably the, one of the most fun that we've had, and uh, we look forward to seeing your, your movie, Lion, has come out. Oh, thank you. It's an honor. Thank you guys for having us. Dave, Jill, yeah, thanks for being on the show today. It was an incredible honor to hear your story. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us here on Army Matters. It was awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. We just heard Jill and Dave talk about coming up with the idea for Lioness around a bonfire. And in our latest chapter spotlight, we'd like to focus on a barbecue. On February 23rd, the Texas Capital Area chapter hosted a social event in conjunction with the Army Futures Command to honor 40 sergeants major. Attendees, including local community partners, were treated to a Texas-style barbecue as well as social networking. Providing remarks were Lieutenant General Ross Kaufman and Command Sergeant Major Brian Hester of Army Futures Command and Chapter President Colonel Retired Gary Patterson. Finally, a special appearance was made by the next Sergeant Major of the Army, Command Sergeant Major Michael Weimer. Congratulations to everyone at Texas Capitol. If you or your chapter would like to be profiled on the show, please email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Hua. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Army Matters is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army, the U.S. Army's professional association, member-supported, Army-connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission, educate, inform, and connect with the total Army, our industry partners, and supporters of a strong national defense. Today's episode was hosted by Lieutenant General Retired Les Smith and SMA Retired Dan Daly, an anchor hosted by Carrie Barrow Heckes. Anthony Dale Call is the producer and writer, and Andy Bosnack is the supervising sound editor. 
Unzinga Curry is the executive producer, and the senior producers are Carrie Viral Heckies and LaSharon Duncan. Special thanks to Lauren Hall and Terry Perriman for their help. Be sure to subscribe to Army Matters wherever you get your podcasts, and please leave a review. As you know, we love seeing stars in the Army, especially if it comes in the form of a five-star review. AUSA's Army Matters podcast, primary purpose is to entertain. The podcast does not constitute advice or services. While guests are invited to listen, listeners, please note that you're not being provided professional advice from the podcast or the guest. The views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views of AUSA. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. I'm with Sharon Duncan. Hope you have a great Army day. Hua.